I'm Julie Herman of Jaybird Quilts, and welcome back to the Joy Sew Along. I'm very excited to work on this table runner. Today, I'm going to briefly go over how I chose my fabrics, and then we're going to work on putting our J together. Joy is a table runner that is a part of my book, Alphabet Soup. And this book contains all 26 letters, as well as zero through nine, and some bonus symbols so that you can make table runners, individual, square letters or numbers, baby quilt, so many more things. There's lots of photos inside that give you many of the possibilities. Joy, I have made as a table runner. I have made as individual pillows. I've made as framed individual letters that can be hung on the wall or on wire frames. I've also made as squares that can be hung um, I've also discovered that my kids enjoy playing with these on the floor. I have a full alphabet that I've made them. So I have decided to give you these three letters for free. So go ahead and sign up at the link below if you haven't yet so that you can get the worksheets. The worksheets will begin with this introductory page that has a coloring diagram, which I've already used mine, and then full directions for J, O, and Y, and then how to put the table runner together. So go ahead and sign up at that link below and this will immediately be sent to you. So I went ahead and cut my fabrics. And what I did, I'm gonna show you, is I had a selection of blue Hanukkah fabrics and I kind of auditioned them and then I used my coloring sheet to help me plan. So here's my O, which I decided to go with some of the darker prints. And here is my J. And then here is my Y. All right, everything stayed pretty much together, which is fantastic. So as I mentioned, I had an assortment of fabrics. This is from a collection from Andover called Festival of Lights um, and has some nice Hanukkah motifs to it. So I had two dark prints. So that was pretty easy to decide to pair them up together um, and use them in the middle. And then I had three medium blueprints. And so I went back and forth, I looked in my stash and I didn't have something um, that I felt like really went well with this. So what I decided to do is I'm using this print twice. So I'm using this print here and over here. And with the J I'm using this one and with the Y I'm using this one. So I went ahead um, before cutting these and I used my worksheet to plan this out. Cut a little scrap of each of my fabrics then I used some um, colored pencils and markers to color this in so that when I went to the next page and I saw which pieces I needed for J and then eventually O and Y I knew exactly what I needed to cut from each of the fabrics. Um, I also did do some fussy cutting here um, that is possible with the rulers and I also have some exciting new tools um, that I will be sharing with you soon. So now that I have everything cut, including my background, I decided to use um, this white print for my background. It's uh, not solid, but I, it has you know some Jewish stars in it in the different blues and a little pop of gold, but I feel like it contrasts enough that you do read the word joy. All of the pieces for the J, the O, and the Y are cut with two of my rulers, the Hex and More and the Super Sidekick. The hex and more is how you can cut the half hexagons for this block, as well as the 60 degree triangles. And then the super sidekick is used to cut the half triangles, um, as well as you can also use it to cut the triangles. If you are not familiar with my rulers or need a refresher, linked below are videos that go over in depth how to do the cutting. Once you have everything cut, it goes together like a puzzle. There is no trimming necessary between steps. If you find that you are needing to trim, I suggest pausing, taking a step back, and figuring out is your seam allowance too big, too small, was your cutting off, where are things going wrong? Because as I mentioned, it really is a puzzle. I suggest sewing with a scant quarter inch seam, which means just one thread over. And I use Aurifil 50 weight. I'll go in more detail when we're over at the sewing machine. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our J page of our worksheets and I first begin by laying it out, making sure that I have cut all of the pieces needed. So that is shown in the arrange section of your directions here. Then we are going to begin 
by sewing these units over here. We're going to sew that unit, this unit, and this unit. This is one of the basic units that is used in many letters. And how this is done is by putting one half triangle on top of a triangle, sew with our scant quarter inch seam. I suggest pressing open, it really does alleviate the bulk when there's lots of pieces coming together. Open and press, and then this one. You might find it helpful to make more blunt corners to help with your alignment. And what I mean by that is all of your triangles will start out with one blunt end, as shown here. Your half triangles do not have that, but you can cut that, and what that will do is help you have another visual up here when you flip to know exactly where to sew. Now, you're gonna sew from that point to that valley. Now, if you don't have that cut, let me show you what it's gonna look like on the back. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna align this edge and this edge. You still do have alignment um, things. You're just going to have that extra little triangle on the back. So let me show you quickly. If you would like, you can go ahead and use um, either the Super Sidekick Ruler or the Hexamore to cut more of your corners blunt. So let me slide these out of the way. So for instance, if I wanted to make this one I'll do it with the top one so that they're both matching. If I want to make this corner right there blunt, what I'm going to do is I'm going to line my piece up so that this edge and this edge line up with this edge and this edge of my ruler. There won't be anything here to match up to, and that's okay. We just need to make sure this edge and this edge line up. Because if they don't, if we're like this, we're going to cut off too much. If they're like this, we're going to cut off too little. So as long as those two edges line up, then we're cutting off the right tiny little seam allowance triangle. This is something you also can do down here as well if you find that helpful. This is the kind of thing that takes a little bit more time in the beginning, but if you find that it helps you to get proper alignment and to get perfectly pieced blocks, then go ahead and do it. I don't do it as often anymore, but whenever I find myself struggling a little bit, this is something I do go back to because it's nice to have multiple places to line up as shown. So now we're going to head on over to the machine and begin piecing the J block. The first step in sew of the create J block is to sew these half triangles onto the triangle. And as I showed when I was cutting, I went ahead and cut the tips off of all of these. So these all have blunt ends and these still have the sharp ones. So I'll show you how that looks different over here at the machine. I'm using RFL 50 weight. I find that it hides um, and disappears really well into the seam. If you use a thicker thread, sometimes it can make your seam allowance too big. And as I mentioned, I'm sewing with a scant quarter inch. And so it is just one thread over. Visually, it doesn't really even appear very different. Below, I'll link to some more information if you're not familiar with sewing with a scant quarter inch seam. So I'm going to begin with my 60 degree triangle. And I like to go to sew this one first. There's no reason why you can't sew this one first though. Um, the order does not actually matter. I just by default always seem to go to this one. So this is the right triangle and this is the left triangle. And how that is determined is this is the one that is cut with the ruler right side up, the super psychic ruler, and this is the one that is cut with the ruler right side up, fabric wrong side up. So that is the left, um, they're mirror images of each other, and so that when they're put together onto this triangle, they will create a rectangle. It's not a square because it's a 60 degree triangle, they will create a rectangle together. So I'm going to begin with these two pieces. When I'm working with pieces this small, I don't pin. Um, if you find it helpful to pin, go ahead and do that. Um, I keep things lined up in front of me so that I don't lose track of where they go. And I just go back and forth to my design wall, make sure I don't mix up the placement of anything. I'm just going to nice and slow. And now I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to chain piece so I don't waste thread and I'm going to work on the next one. And with this one, since I cut my all my tips off, 
just going to line up all my blunt ends on top of each other. And so my same scant quarter inch seam. I'm gonna grab my snips and snip these apart. This is just a scrap of fabric I use as a leader ender. I'm gonna keep that handy for when I need to sew back onto something. It helps avoid getting that thread nest. So now I'm going to open up this seam. What I like to do is I like to finger press. And as I mentioned, I do my seams open. It helps to alleviate bulk. And then this is one of my favorite tools. This is the Violet Craft Seam Roller. Um, if you've been around here for a little while, you've probably seen me use this before. And it really just helps to make the seam nice and flat without having to bust my iron out. Um, I generally will um, iron depending on how many seams intersect, um, but I don't need to get my iron just for that one. So now that that is nice and flat, I'm gonna go ahead and get my next piece. And now that I actually do have the dog ear on this one because I didn't trim that um, off, that's actually gonna be my alignment point right there. And then where that valley is between those is should, I guess I should say should, not is, um, where my scant quarter and seam belongs. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew this one and then I'll show you what it's gonna look like if you did cut your blunt points off. Okay, so snip this one off. And again, I'm going to begin by finger pressing. And then I'll take my seam roller. And now when I go to add this piece, I don't have that dog ear, um, but I also don't have a sharp point here. So that blunt end there is going to line up right with the top of my piece. And then that blunt end there is gonna line up there. Okay. So again, I'm gonna just finger press this to finish this little section. And this is a personal preference here if you wanna turn the iron on. Um, it will help it lay flatter when we go to sew the next piece. Um, so if you find that you're not getting it flat enough with a seam roller, please, um, I highly suggest turning the iron on. I'm not gonna turn that on yet for today. I'm just gonna keep going. Um, so I'm gonna set this piece aside for a moment and work on step two. So step two um, looks very similar. It's just a triangle pointing down instead of up and the colors have reversed. So here I had my slightly darker blue on the outside, now I have it on the inside, and my lighter one was on the inside, now it's on the outside. So I'm gonna go ahead and same process, um, begin with one of my half triangles on top of my triangle. And now I can press my first block, or first unit I should say. We haven't made the J block yet. We're getting there. These letters are, um, they're a little complicated, um, or I should say labor intensive. They have a lot of pieces. Um, they're intricate, um, but they're not necessarily hard. Um, they're just a puzzle and you just have to follow the directions and put things together. Um, sometimes it might seem a little funny, the order that I do things. Um, and I will tell you, there is almost certainly always a reason why for whatever the order is. Um, I have made the mistake with my own patterns of not following the directions and going rogue and thinking, oh, it's gonna fit together this way, only to realize I've inadvertently created um, a Y seam or made something harder for myself. Um, none of these letters um, in the entire alphabet have a Y seam. There's a few partial seams, but those are not nearly as complicated as a Y seam. I try and keep things as simple as possible. Um, so as long as you follow the directions step by step, you will be good to go. So to finish this middle piece, I'm gonna put my other half triangle on and sometimes um, I'll work on another project in between and I'll piece that um, but often when I'm working with pieces this small I'll just use a scrap of a leader ender because um, I'm just going to constantly go back and forth um, between things. I'm going to go ahead and press this one 
And so at this point, you should now have three rectangles that each have one triangle and one and two half triangles. So I'm going to go back to my pattern and step three shows that I'm going to arrange these like this. So this is going to begin to make the column of my J. So I'm going to have my triangle pointed up, down, up. Now, I will say there are times like this that these are, they're, they're a rectangle. If you piece the entire thing like this and realize it at the end, if it bothers you, you can go ahead and take it out. But logistically, it's okay. Um, Space-wise, it's okay. If you happen to flip them all, it's okay. Um, but I designed it so that you'll have opposing colors and have this nice contrast between the two fabrics that you chose for each letter. So I always do my best to constantly reference back to my pattern to make sure that I have things in the right place. So I'm going to start with the top two and piece these together. Um, I'm not too worried about lining these up um, because it's pretty small. I think that they're going to do well. You could pin if you wanted to. I'm just going to lay them on top of each other and do my best to get those seams on top. And this is where um, a stiletto can begin to come in handy. I have a bunch of different ones. This one is from Annie um, it, so that you don't get your fingers too close to your machine. Don't want to sew on your finger. Did that before. Not a fun experience. Um, the stiletto is a nice way to kind of have an extra finger that can get closer to the machine to hold things into place. Okay, so let's see how that turned out. Pretty good. It's not perfect, um, but it's pretty darn close. I'm very happy with how that turned out. So I'm going to finger press it. And at this point, these seams may not lay as flat. I have you know, four pieces coming together here. Um, so I may need to turn my iron on pretty soon to make sure that these seams are nice and flat before I continue to add anything else. So again, going to place this back, make sure that I'm not like this because I want to be like this. So I'm going to always come back and match it to my diagram. And here, um, technically, you could use the hang pin. It's a technique. Um, well, I'll link it below that I've shown. Um, but because we're working so small, I don't think you need to go ahead and do that. Um, but if you like the hang pin, feel free to go ahead and use that here. I am just going to eyeball these on top of each other. And I always remind myself as well that um, these are not high contrast from each other within each letter. And the overall effect of whatever quilt or project I'm working on is seeing the letter as a whole. So it's not about um, perfection within each letter. Um, so I always kind of remind myself it's about the, the overall project. Um, but we each have our own tolerance for how perfect or how not perfect we are comfortable with. And if it's going to bother you in the finished project, go ahead, take it out, redo it is always my advice. So. There's that one. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finger press this. And now I am going to take this piece back over to my design wall and lay it back down and gather the pieces for the next couple of steps in my J. So I have completed steps one through three, and I'm back over here at my design wall. And the next pieces that I'm gonna be working on are steps four, five, and six, which are made up of this section here. So step four is gonna to be to sew these two together, which is gonna be very similar to when we sewed those together. Step five is going to be to sew these together. And again, I could put, cut that off if I wanted um, to help with alignment. I'm not going to go ahead and do that, but if I was going to, I'd use the same technique. And then after I've sewn these two together and these two together, I'm going to sew that together to create this unique shape here in the center of the J. And then I will sew these together. And I think once I have these pieced, I'm gonna go ahead and turn my iron on, give this a good press, give this a good press before I go to sew those together. Back over at my machine, I'm going to start with these two pieces. So I'm simply going to line them up just as I did um, with my earlier ones. And since I have not cut that off of my triangle, I am just trusting my alignment up here and I'm gonna to sew to that valley there. And one thing I haven't mentioned yet is grain. Um, because these pieces are have a lot of 60 degree angles, you're often going to be working with straight of grain, straight of grain, bias. These are both straight of grain, these are bias. 
Um, the key to this is just to not stretch things. You don't want to inadvertently pull something. That's when you're going to get things a little bit bumpy. So I'm always just careful when I'm sewing my pieces together. Um, so I'm simply going to line this tr half triangle up right here. And that those two blunt ones are going to line up perfectly. This is going to line up here and this here. And then I'm going to have that tiny little triangle overhang. So back onto my little scrap so that I'll be able to cut both of those off. And as I mentioned in the very beginning, this is a puzzle. Um, I have designed this so that everything is perfectly cut um, so that you don't need to be trimming in between pieces um, to get things to fit. So if you are finding that you feel the need to trim or whatnot, take a pause, take a step back, um, look at it and then see why. Again, is it your seam allowance? Was your cutting not correct? What's going on? Um, this is a unique shape here, but it and it might not look initially like these are gonna fit together because this overhangs, but this is a puzzle and they are designed to fit together. If you cut that sharp point off, you would see that they're the same width here. But what happens is when you put them right sides together, both of these seams are gonna line up on top of each other. And we're gonna have that overhang so that we're going to sew to that valley for our quarter inch. And some people might ask, well, why is this piece? They're all the same fabric. And the answer is because it's a strange shape that is not so easy to cut um, without having it pieced. And by using the pieces of the ruler that have been designed for this purpose, um, we're going to get a perfectly sized piece that doesn't require any funky trimming or crossing of our fingers just to hope that it's going to turn out right. It's going to turn out well as long as you have your cutting done well. So again, I'm going to use my seam roller. So now I have this piece, um, which as I mentioned, it's got five sides. It's a strange looking piece, um, but it is perfectly going to be the center of our J. So I'm going to turn my iron on and head over to press this. I've gone ahead and moved the pieces that I have put together so far, as well as my remaining cut pieces, over to my pressing station. Quick note is I do have an ironing board, but I find that I don't like lugging it out unless I am ironing a lot of fabric, uh, backing for something, yardage, etc. When I'm doing a small a bit of ironing or pressing like this, I find this board is super helpful. This is by June Taylor. Um, this is probably my fourth or fifth one of these because I've kind of um, had them, I started using them like 20 years ago and eventually um, water spills and stains and whatnot. Um, but I love these things. Um, they are um, the same size, they're 18 by 24 as the, most of the small cutting mats. So they'll fit um, in a lot of those travel bags, got a little handle, you can hang it on the wall. Um, so I just, grab this all the time and throw it on my table. Um, so just a quick little tip there. So now that I have these pieces, I wanna go ahead and press these two um, before I go ahead and move to step seven, which is to sew these two together. So I'm just gonna slide these out of the way, the pieces that I have not used yet. And I always like to begin pressing from the back to make sure nothing flips upside down. And our pressing is up and down. Ironing is when we push we iron clothes, we can iron yardage. We do not want to iron quilt blocks. You can go down and a little wiggle, but you really don't want to push, especially when you're working with things with bias. Um, that's often how we end up distorting them. Um, so you want to be careful when you're over using your iron to make sure that you're pressing. And if you did a good job using your seam roller, things are already generally flat um, and you have less work to do over here. If you didn't, um, make sure that you open up these seams over here and keep your hand out of the way. I will grab my heat resistant stiletto the next time I press so that I can show you that. So now that I have these pressed, I'm going to do step seven, like I mentioned, which is to sew these two together. Um, and I am going to make sure that I sew with this piece on top because I don't really care about this point. It's all the same color, but I do care about this point. Um, so I want to make sure that I am focused on sewing right to that point. 
Um, as you can see, these are not perfectly straight next to each other. Um, things like that are going to happen, and so I am just going to let that live in the seam allowance where no one will see it, and I'm going to focus on sewing to that point right there. So I will show you a little closer here. Um, my point lines up well on the front, um, but my seam allowance ended up a little bit further over here because they're not perfectly lined up. And so I'm just gonna let all of that live in the seam allowance. I'm gonna focus on making sure that my height, which at this point should be six and a half inches, is correct for both of them, line them up, and then make sure that my needle goes right in where that point is so that I don't lose that point in my unit. grab my stiletto, make sure I keep all of these seams that I have pressed open nice and flat as I'm approaching the needle. And from this point on with the, uh, the letter J, we are going to be continuing to add on to this main piece. Um, earlier on we were building units and then sewing those units together, but now we're going to be sewing onto this piece. So I'm gonna head back on over to the iron to press this before we add the next piece. I'm back here at my pressing station. I'm going to go ahead and press this seam open, and I have not yet finger pressed this one. So I'm going to finger press it, and I could use my seam roller, but since I have my iron on, I'm just gonna go ahead and press it with my iron. I am going to use my heat resistant stiletto, um, the end here is um, silicone and won't burn, so you can get it super close to the iron, you can even touch the iron, where you can't do that with your own finger, obviously. Um, so I'm going to just go ahead and press, and what this can do is help keep things down anywhere you would want to use your finger, but <laughs> obviously do not want to use your finger because you do not want to burn your finger. Okay, now that I have that pressed, the next step is step eight. And step eight is to add this bottom half hexagon, which will really begin to make it look like a J. And the alignment here of this is that our blunt end here is going to line up here. And there is um, less visual over here, but this point um, is going to line up right with that point of the seam allowance. I'll show you closer up at the sewing machine. So with the alignment, what I was saying is that this angle here is going to line up with this angle here. You're gonna ignore that little triangle. If it bothers you, you could cut it off, but that's gonna line up there. And if you find it helpful, I'm gonna actually put a pin in at this point, just to make sure nothing moves while I'm working on the other side. And here, this point here, can you see that? Maybe if I stick my finger under it. That point there is going to line up with where these two come together. So I'm gonna line that up. And it means there's gonna be a little point of this half hexagon overhanging that is correct. And generally I recommend to sew um, with the smallest piece on top. So if you're sewing something small to something large to sew with this on top, but in this case, since we have a point here that we don't wanna lose, I'm actually gonna sew from this side. So now that I have it pinned, gonna make sure that neither one of my pins is in my seam allowance area. Don't wanna ever sew over a pin, not good for your sewing machine, not good for safety reasons for something coming at you. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and sew my seam from this side. And again, I'm going to use my stiletto and make sure that I try and get my stitching line to go right over that point. In my case, it looks like my seam allowance is gonna be a little more scant than usual in order to hit that point. We'll see if that worked out well for me. And it did, it worked out perfectly. So um, this point is now touching my half triangle right there. So a lot of back and forth at this point, gonna go over and press this piece. So I'm going to press this. And if you've noticed at this point, the letter J, it's not necessarily hard, but it is labor intensive. Um, some of the letters will definitely take more time than others. And um, this one is um, one of those that I think definitely takes a little bit more time, but I find that it's worth it. It's a really cool effect 
um, to have made the J out of these shapes and have the contrast of the two different fabrics. Um, I have made so many of these alphabet soup letters over the years, whether it be for table runners or quilts. Um, I, I love them <laughs> very, very much. Um, so now step nine, I'm gonna bring this back over here, make sure everything's lined up. Step nine is that we are going to sew this piece here. And then step 10 is that we are going to sew both of these. So I'm going to do this in one step since there will not be a need to press this before sewing these on. So I'm going to take all of these pieces over to the machine and I'm first going to do this one to this and then add these. And this one has two alignment points, which is that it has the two blunt corners. That's how the half hexes are cut. It's gonna perfectly line up right here and right here. And again, um, I could sew this from either side. So this is not a point that we're worried about since it's two background fabrics. Um, so I could um, pin it like I did this one and sew from the back or from the front, um, whichever way that you prefer. Since I'm not worried about this point here, I'm just gonna go ahead and put this on um, without pinning and I'm going to sew from this side. So I'll show you what that looks like. Just gonna line that up and line that up. If you would like to pin, please, by all means, go ahead. Um, you do what is best for you. I'm not gonna pin this one though. Still gonna go nice and slow as I do have a little bit of bulk in the middle there when I get to the back. And as I mentioned, that was step nine. And I'm gonna move right on to step 10 since I don't need to press this. Um, and step 10 is to sew these. So I'm just gonna open it up so that I know, um, actually I'm gonna do this one first. So this one goes right here and this will seem similar to a lot of the other ones that we did. And here now I will say though, there is really not um, anything to align this with. Um, this point should line up with where those are, but it, um, it's actually gonna overhang a little bit. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm going to cut this point here. Um, I am going to give myself another alignment point so that I know how to perfectly line that up. I have many rulers in my collection, including a mini hex and more, which can also be used. I like to keep this one over at my machine for moments just like this. Um, super handy to line up these two edges and trim this just the same way that I used um, the large hex and more to cut points in the beginning of this lesson. Um, if you don't have this, by all means, go ahead and use your super sidekick or your standard hex and more. So now that I have that cut off, I'm gonna bring this back and you'll see I know exactly where to line that up now. So that's really gonna help me um, have a nice alignment point to get this to be sewn as accurate as possible. And so to finish step 10, I need to sew my left half triangle here, and I could cut that point off just like I did with that one, but since I have this angle here, that I know is going to line up with this. I am going to choose not to, but if I did, you would see that it would line up perfectly right there. Trimming the points off is a very personal decision, um, and it's the kind of thing that takes more time, but it really can help you with alignment. So if you're finding it useful, I highly suggest taking the time. Um, often it is less time to cut the points off than it is to have to use your seam ripper to take something apart um, if it didn't turn out how you wanted it in the first place. So I'm going to head back on over to my pressing station to press all three of these seams. I'm going to start by finger pressing. And that one's gonna naturally wanna lay flatter than this one because there is an intersection here. So I'm gonna make sure that I grab my heat resistant stiletto, especially for that location. And for this location, this one's gonna be a little easier. So I'm gonna press that one first. Use that to keep that open. And after I get these pressed, just one more piece and my J will be complete. And often after pressing on the back, I will flip it over and press on the front. Um, when I'm not recording, I do use steam. I find steam to be very helpful. Um, it's a little bit too loud when recording and it also often will fog up the camera. Um, so I don't have that turned on on my iron now, um, but I find that very helpful. 
The last step, step 11, um, is to sew this half triangle on up here. And as I mentioned earlier, I generally sew with the smaller item on top, so naturally I would go this way. But because I have a couple seams here that I wanna make sure don't flip, I find it easier to sew with those on top. So I'm gonna just grab a couple pins and pin this in place, and then I'm going to sew it from the back. I'm gonna sew it from here, and that way I can use my stiletto to make sure none of these flip. Okay, and it looks like this is kind of wiggling because my pin's up there, so I wanna make sure that stays in place. Use my stiletto to help me do that. And the last step is to go ahead and press this seam. Once you have completed your J block, give yourself a pat on the back. It's something to be really proud of. It's like I flipped my seam here, so I'm gonna use my stiletto. Make sure that I give that a good press. I need to turn my steam on to get that totally flat. Once you have completed your J block, give yourself a pat on the back. You deserve it. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave those in the comments below. Please be sure to like and subscribe to this channel if you enjoyed today's video. And I will be back here in a couple days to show you how to make the O-Block.